I just had to film that thumbnail and let me tell you that was really difficult. And also I'm not wearing my glasses because you can see the obvious glare from the ring light. So you're getting a no glasses alley today. So if you didn't already guess by the title of this video, we are doing a book haul. So I'm really excited about this book haul. I really wanted to film it in a different area than I typically film. And now you can see my entire background, basically my entire room almost. You can see my shelf that's up there, the shelves that are right here. And I think this is kind of cute. Okay, so I don't want to spend too much time on this intro. We need to get through these books. There are quite a lot of them and I want to get through them as quickly as possible. <laughs> so if you didn't know, I have been on a book buying ban since around the middle of February and it lasted all the way up until my birthday. So these are all books that I've bought literally after my birthday. I kind of went a little bit crazy. I was very desperate for some books. So we're gonna start off with the first one that I got and that is Music of the Night by Angela J. Ford. Look at how gorgeous this book cover is. Oh my goodness, absolutely breathtaking. I'm very excited about this book. I've heard so much about it on Twitter. Literally, a lot of people have bought it because of the cover. Same with me. And I'm just really excited to read it. It is a Phantom of the Opera retelling. I need more of those in my life so bad. So if you know of any Phantom of the Opera retellings, let me know down below in the comments. The next book that I got was Fat Chance Charlie Vega by Crystal Maldonado. And I'm really excited about this book because A, there's some fat representation, B, there's some Latinx representation, and I'm just really excited to see parts of myself represented in this book. And this is basically about Charlie Vega, and she is dating this guy named Brian, and she ends up finding out that she was actually his second choice, and he had already asked out her friend, who is thinner, athletic, very pretty, and got rejected by her and then asked Charlie out instead. So I'm really interested in seeing how that plot plays out in this book and I'm actually going to read it in April. The next book was one that I mentioned in one of my most anticipated books of 2020 videos and that is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. This is a Peter Pan retelling and I am so excited to read this book. I cannot even explain it to you. I loved Cemetery Boys so much and ever since then I've been dying to see what Aiden Thomas will come out with next and oh, I'm just so excited to read this book. So many Peter Pan retellings are coming out this year. This is one of the first ones and I'm pumped. I'm excited. I've heard good things about it. At least from the people who've already read this book, they seem to like it and I'm sure that I'll like it as well. There was a little bit of controversy with this book because technically it isn't quote unquote hashtag own voices. It's not necessarily a queer book in the way that Cemetery Boys was but I'm still super pumped about it. I don't think that that's a deterrent for me and I'm just, I'm so ready to read more Peter Pan retellings. The next one is another very highly anticipated book and that is Bone Cryer's Dawn by Catherine Purdy. Ah, I'm so excited to read the sequel. Oh my gosh, I'm ready. I loved Bone Cryer's Moon last year, one of my favorite books of the year. And I'm just, I know I'm gonna love this book. I know it's gonna be even better than the first one. I am so, so ready for it. I can't even explain it to you. I can't talk too much about what this book is about, but basically the first book is kind of like an enemies to lover sort of situation about a bone crier and this guy who wants to kill bone criers. So super exciting. I really loved that book so much. The conflict was amazing. The romance was amazing. The characterization, the friendships, the relationships, everything, it worked for me. The next two books are ones that I got from Thrift Books and that is Graceling by Kristen Kishore. And I've never read this book before. I know that's like, how have you been on booktube and not read this book? I don't know. I am so behind, but ever since the new book came out, I have been wanting to read the series. I know I'm so behind, but I'm ready to read it. I'm really excited. This is the really old cover, but I saw it on thrift books and I just decided to pull the trigger and buy it. It says, Katza has been able to kill a man with her bare hands since she was eight. She's a Graceling, one of the rare people in her land born with an extreme skill. As niece of the king, she should be able to live a life of privilege, but graced as she is with killing, she is forced to work as a king's thug. When she first meets Prince Poe, Graced with combat skills, Katza has no hint of how her life is about to change. She never expects to become Poe's friend. 
She never expects to learn a new truth about her own grace or about a terrible secret that lies hidden far away. I'm pumped. I'm ready. The next book is one that unfortunately did not come with a dust jacket. I am like very upset, I know, but that is The Grand Ellipse. Yeah, did not come with a dust jacket. That's thrift books for you. But I got recommended this book on Twitter because I asked for books that were similar to The Night Circus or The Crown's Game or even Caraval. And someone recommended me this book, so I ended up finding it on thrift books. I actually got it for free because I had a free book. So I had ordered enough from thrift books that I had earned a free book and I used it for this. So I guess I got what I paid for. I am so excited for the next book. It is a new release. It just came out yesterday. I am ready for it. I am ready. I just, I have been waiting for this book for so long. Oh my gosh, King of Scars destroyed me. So now you probably know what the book is. That is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. Ah, I'm so excited. I can't believe I have this in my hands right now. Look at how gorgeous it is. Oh my gosh, and she is thick. I am so shocked at how big this book is. It's almost 600 pages and I'm just like, what? What? 600, like almost 600 pages? Are you kidding me? Look at how gorgeous it is and just, oh my gosh, hold on. Let's take a moment. Let's gather ourselves. Let's be prepared for the beauty that is underneath the dust jacket. Okay, let's take a moment of silence. Okay, I think we're ready. Look at that. Look at that. Look at how flippin' gorgeous this book is. Oh, oh my gosh. I am just, this is everything. This is what I read for. <laughs> this is what it's all about. <laughs> this is why I do what I do. Oh my gosh, it's literally gorgeous. I took the dust jacket off like immediately when I got it in the mail and I was just like, oh my gosh. I don't even know how I'm gonna be ready for this. I don't know how I'm gonna be ready. Look at these end pages. What the heck? These gorgeous end pages. Oh, I love this book. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. I'm ready to be destroyed mentally, emotionally, physically destroyed. And I'm ready to see Nikolai and Zoya again. Oh, I love Nikolai and Zoya so much. I love them so much. They are my babies. They're my angels. I love them. So yeah, like I said, I'm ready for Rule of Wolves. I'm ready for it. I'm ready to be destroyed. The next two books are actually part of a series and the first one is The Missing of Claire de Lune by Christelle Debeau. This is a sequel to A Winter's Promise that I just read, finished, loved. I'm obsessed with it now. And this is the sequel, like I said, so excited. I love this pale yellow so much. I don't think it'll photograph very well but it's absolutely gorgeous. And look at these end pages. What is up with the beautiful, gorgeous end pages? Look at them. Oh, so pretty. And then the pale yellow, it's everything to me. I love book design. It just, it gets to me. It, it understands me on a personal level and I love it. And then the third book in the series is The Memory of Babel. I'm ready. I'm ready. The pale green is gorgeous. These books are just so aesthetically pleasing. I can't get over it. <laughs> like, look at how pretty these are. Have you ever seen Two Pretty Best Friends? Now you have. So yeah, I'm very excited to continue on with this series. I'm ready for it. I'm ready again to be destroyed. The first book got me angry. <laughs> I was angry on behalf of the main character. Like, she was not angry enough for my taste and you know what she should have been angrier so i hope that things go well for ophelia in the series and even if they don't at least it will benefit me and my emotional issues <laughs> okay so i think we're halfway through we're making good time this actually isn't bad so the next book is one that i got because i returned another book to target and I hated it. I read about 100 pages of it. It was The Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow. I hated that book. I'm so sorry if you loved it. I totally understand why you loved it. It's very cute, very fluffy, but it just was not a book for me, unfortunately. So thankfully, I was able to return it to Target, and then while I was there, after I returned that book, I ended up picking up The Dutch House by Ann Patchett. 
I am so excited about this book. The way that it's been described, the way that people have talked about it, and the way that the synopsis described it as, I am just really pumped for it. And I'm always on the lookout for good adult fiction. And the things that really stood out to me in the synopsis were the descriptions of it being set over the course of five decades. The Dutch House is a dark fairy tale about two smart people who cannot overcome their past. Despite every outward sign of success, Danny and Maeve are only truly comfortable when they're together. Throughout their lives, they return to the well-worn narrative of what they've lost with humor and rage. But when at last they're forced to confront the people who left them behind, the relationship between an indulged brother and his ever-protective sister is finally tested. The Dutch House is a story of a paradise lost, a tour de force that digs deeply into questions of inheritance, love, forgiveness, how we want to see ourselves, and who we really are. It is filled with suspense, and though you may read it quickly to discover what happens, Danny and Maeve will stay with you for a very long time. When I read that in Target, I literally was like, this book was written for me. I feel, I have a good feeling about this book, and just from that synopsis, I'm like, I think that this book might be like a new favorite. I have a good feeling about it. So if you've read this book, let me know if you think I'll like it. So I'm excited. <laughs> it is hot today. It is literally over 80 degrees today and I am burning up for you, baby. The next book is another one that I got as a recommendation for when I asked for books that are similar to The Night Circus, The Crown's Game, Caraval, things like that. And this is one of the recommendations I got. This is Senlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. I know nothing about this book. I am taking these people's word for these recommendations and I'm very excited to read this one. This says, mild-mannered headmaster Tom Thomas Senlin, I cannot read today, prefers his adventures to be safely contained within the pages of a book. So when he loses his new bride shortly after embarking on the honeymoon of their dreams, he is ill-prepared for the troubles that follow. To find her, Senlin must enter the Tower of Babel, a world of geniuses and tyrants, of luxury and menace, of unusual animals and mysterious machines. He must endure betrayal, assassination attempts, and the illusion of the tower. And if he hopes to ever find his wife again, he will have to do more than just survive. This quiet man of letters must become a man of action. This sounds like a book that I'm gonna enjoy, and he sounds like a main character that I really appreciate, especially a male main character. If I'm gonna read from the perspective of a man, I don't like when they're super hyper masculine, macho, tough guy. I don't like that, that is not for me. Um, I really like, think of Henry Strauss from The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue. He is my book boyfriend, I love him. I would die for him. That's the kind of guy that I like. You know, mild-mannered, guy of like books, letters, things like that. That is my type. Or like Jem from The Infernal Devices. I love Jem. Jem is my favorite. Will, I like, he's fine. But it's all about Jem for me. It's all about Jem. <laughs> so yeah, that's like typically my type of male main character that I enjoy reading from. So hopefully this will be a book that I really like, you know? It sounds promising. <laughs> okay, so continuing on, I have this next book. And that is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpredo. I am really excited to read this book. I feel like I've never heard anybody really talk about it, but whenever I would go to Barnes & Noble, I would see the sequel for this book because for some reason they never had this one in stock. They only had the sequel in stock, which is so weird to me. But I would consistently pick up the sequel and be like, oh, this is a really cool looking book. I really like the cover. And then I would be like, oh wait, this is the sequel. <laughs> And so I was like, you know what, I'm finally going to buy this first book because I want to see if I end up liking it so then I could buy the sequel. <laughs> so I am very excited to read this book. I think I'm going to like it. It has something to do with phoenixes, which I haven't really read very many of those in books, like ever. I feel like it's always dragons. I don't know if that's just me. I feel like it's always dragons. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this book. I think I'm going to like it. It just like, it has such a cool cover. Like, look at how cool that looks. 
Can you tell I'm losing steam? This is just a lot. I don't typically do book hauls. I don't love doing book hauls. So I'm trying to make it more fun for me by standing up and doing a different background. So I don't know. It's going well, I guess. <laughs> the next book is one that I've seen so many people talk about. I know that Heather from Aphrodite Reads, I think, likes this book. I can't remember now. <laughs> I'm gonna leave this in. Let me know down below if Heather from Aphrodite Reads likes this book. I feel like, I feel like that's true. Is it true? Let me know. It's the Library of the Unwritten. Now I'm second guessing myself majorly. I don't think it was Heather. <laughs> but you know what? Whoever it was, I trust their reviews. And I'm excited for this book, The Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackwith. Um, I've seen a lot about this book and after I read Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try out this book. I might like it. I know that this is about a library that contains unfinished books, I think. I think that's what it's about. Okay, so it says, many years ago, Claire was named head librarian of the Unwritten Wing, a neutral space in hell where all the stories unfinished by their authors authors reside. Her job consists mainly of repairing and organizing books, but also of keeping an eye on restless stories that risk materializing as characters and escaping the library. When a hero escapes from his book and goes in search of its author, Claire must track and capture him with the help of former muse and current assistant Brevity and the nervous and sweet demon Leto. Leto? Jared Leto? I guess it's like Jared Leto, right? So Leto. <laughs> um, this sounds really exciting. It does kind of sound similar to Sorcery of Thorns, doesn't it? Um, so I think because I liked Sorcery of Thorns, I'll probably like this book as well. But it's like the adult version. And it's set in hell, so that's also equally exciting. <laughs> please, please do not judge me for this next book. I am weak. My will is weak. Don't judge me. <laughs> the next book that I got was A Court of Mist and Fury. I was about to say Wings and Ruin. I keep thinking that the second book is A Court of Wings and Ruin, so I almost bought that one. It was a close call. Um, <laughs> I have read A Court of Thorns and Roses. It's been a while, but I read it and I do remember basically the entire thing. So because the newest book in the spin-off series was released, I've been feeling a lot of FOMO. And it's not good when I feel FOMO. It makes me feel like shit. So I bought this on my birthday. I don't love the new covers. I don't love that I had to buy it in paperback. I love, I just hit myself in the face. <laughs> I love the old covers, personally. I personally like the old covers, but you know what, whatever. I'm not the cover designer. I'm not Sarah J Mass. I'm not Bloomsbury, right? Is that Bloomsbury? I don't fucking know, but it's not my choice. I have a Barnes & Noble membership, so I did get a discount on this book, but whatever. I could not find it secondhand. I tried my best to look for it secondhand, could not find it for less than $50, so had to buy a new copy. I should have just bought those books when I was reading A Court of Thorns and Roses. I should have just done it. I don't know. I thought that I would never want to read these books, but you know what? Like I said, I have a weak will. Three more books left. Three more, and then we're done. The next one is A Daughter Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I am so excited to get to these books. It's been a long time. This I feel like this has had the same journey for me as Grave Mercy. Because back when I started watching BookTube really regularly, the whole, like, the books that I remember being popular were this one, The Raven Cycle, Grave Mercy, things like that. And I never got to those books. I don't know why, I just didn't. I think I was in more of like a contemporary headspace at that time. I read so much more contemporary than fantasy. So I do remember trying to pick this book up, but I wasn't ready for it. I remember feeling like this book was meant for people who had already gotten into fantasy. Like this wasn't a good book for someone who had never read fantasy, who had no idea of like the tropes, or things to expect, the kind of characters, the kind of relationships. I was caught off guard. I wasn't ready for it. But now that I'm 26, I've read so many fantasy books in my life. I feel like I'm ready to finally read this book. I think I'm actually going to enjoy it. I think it's going to connect with me this time. 
and I love the new covers. Like, I actually really do love this cover change. They're not my favorite covers that I've ever seen for this book. I will put a picture of my favorite cover right there. Gorgeous. Literally beautiful. Love those covers. This one I like, but not as much as the other ones I like, but better than the original covers, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, second to last book. This is a highly anticipated 2021 release from me. This is Sapphic Fantasy, gorgeous cover. That is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrienne Tooley. I am so excited for this book. Technically, I had an arc of it. At one point, I had an arc of it, but I've decided that I'm no longer going to be using that galley, so <laughs> doesn't really matter at this point. Does not matter. So when I went to Barnes & Noble on my birthday, this was like the one book that I was like, I need to get this book. If I do anything today, it, I have to get this book. So I got it, got my hands on it. It's gorgeous. I love, um, we have two girls holding hands on the cover. That is very exciting to me, especially for fantasy. Just, can we just have a moment of silence for that? Just, just to appreciate it for a little bit. Okay, I think that was good enough. I love sapphic fantasy. I'm so excited to get to this one, yes. Also, I'm so sorry that I'm not giving like in-depth descriptions for these books. Like I said, this is the third video I filmed today. It is over 80 degrees. So you are getting kind of the bare minimum, but I hope that I'm kind of selling you on these books because you know what? Sapphic fantasy should be enough for you to at least pick up the book. You don't have to like it, but at least pick it up. And the very last book in this haul is another one that has been on my most anticipated list of 2020. I am so excited for it. Down Comes the Night by Allison Saft. I feel like that was a really great introduction to this book. <laughs> I don't know where I was. I got a Twitter notification and I got distracted. Anyway, um, I'm really excited about this book. It says, he saw the darkness in her magic. She saw the magic in his darkness. Look at these end pages. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Look at We love that. The little filigree. Is that filigree? I don't know. I'll read a little bit of the synopsis. It says, Ren Sutherland's reckless use of magic has cost her everything. She's been dismissed from the Queen's Guard and separated from her best friend, the girl she loves. So when a letter arrives from a reclusive lord asking Ren to come to his estate, Colwick Hall, to cure his servant of a mysterious illness, she seizes her chance to redeem herself. The mansion is crumbling, icy winds haunt the caved in halls, and Ren's eccentric host forbids her from leaving her room after dark. So this book kind of is starting to remind me a little bit of Crimson Peak. I love Crimson Peak. I watched it for the first time last year, absolutely adored it, became one of my new favorite movies of all time. I love that movie, so if it's anything like that, I'm ready for it, honestly. I think it's gonna be good. <laughs> okay, that is it. Those are all the books in my haul. Oh my gosh, can you see that when I go on a book buying ban, it is not good. It's not good. So I don't know if I'll ever be doing a book buying ban again, but you know what? It was fun. It was kind of nice to see how long I could go without buying a book. And let me tell you, it was pretty painful. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this haul. In the comments down below, let me know if any of these books that I mentioned are ones that you're excited about reading or ones that you have read and you really enjoyed. Don't tell me if you didn't like a book. I know, I'm so sorry if you didn't like the book. I understand. Just don't tell me. Don't tell me yet. Because I don't wanna go into it being like, oh, I should have low expectations for this book. I wanna go into a book being super excited to read this book. You know what I mean? I don't wanna go into it thinking like, oh, this person really hated this book. Now I'm gonna hate this book. And I'm just gonna like, totally sabotage myself. No, please don't tell me if you didn't like a book. Just tell me if you really loved it. I want to go into every single one of these books expecting to love it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this haul. I hope you enjoyed this background. And if you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, TikTok, Storygraph. All the links are down below and I will see you all in my next video. Bye! Ooh, I thought it'd be me